In your JBA switch button box kit, you'll get one box like this. This is the four button box with the one switch. And then a two meter cable that allows you to connect this box to one of your Hydros devices. Now the JBA switch box does require a Hydros device with a zero to 10 volt in port like this on the control four, or also the wave engine light also has a zero to 10 volt input as well. Next step, you'll want to take your JBA box, take the supplied cable, connect it to one of the two ports on the button box, secure it, and then take the other end and attach it to one of your devices that has an open zero to 10 volt input port, either this wave engine light or this control four. The JBA Hydros button box allows you to control your Hydros modes without having to take your phone out of your pocket. So if you normally have some modes configured on your Hydros device, such as feed mode, water change mode, or other modes, you can configure each mode to be triggered by a certain button on the controller. So how does this box work? Well, on every Hydros device that has a zero to 10 volt input, there's actually four channels per connector. This box itself uses two of those four channels. One channel is assigned to these four push buttons, while the other channel is assigned to this toggle switch. That leaves you with two unused channels. That's why we provide you with a secondary connector here, so you can attach other accessories to take advantage of those two unused channels. On this unit, there's actually a toggle switch that's included. The output of this toggle switch is actually on a secondary channel of this button box, in addition to the buttons on it. When it's in the down position, it will output zero volts. When it's in the up enabled position, it will output five volts. And actually the end of the button will light as well. You can then use this toggle switch to control certain outputs on your hydros, such as just a return pump or skimmer, or even more based on how you configure it. The simplest way to use this button box is to use the push buttons to trigger your modes. This tutorial will show you how to set that up and go through all the programming or configuration to control those. But you can use these buttons and this toggle switch for more advanced features that are covered in the tutorial on the website. We'll touch a little bit upon those configurations, but the primary focus of this tutorial is getting you started with controlling your modes with the push buttons. Now that your button box is connected to your Hydros device, in this case, a Hydros X4, the first thing I recommend is making sure your button box is working by making an input to monitor the input voltage. The first thing you need to do is click the three dots to the right of your inputs, hit add new input, hit the bottom right plus to add new input. We'll call this voltage. Hit create. For type, you want zero to 10 volt input because it's a zero to 10 volt device. Input mode, we're gonna do analog because we wanna see the voltage. For this button box, channel one is where the four buttons are assigned to. So I'm gonna go ahead and select input one, leave scale factor and offset the same. Data type, go with generic. And once you have that, upload changes. Now go back to your main status screen and you should now see a tile for your button box input voltage. When no buttons are pressed, you should see about 0.19 or 0.2 volts, roughly zero. Now, if I push one of my buttons, it should change to whatever voltage that button number is. So I'm gonna hit the button for one, hold it down, wait, and it shows one volt. Release, it goes back to zero. I'm gonna do the same thing for button two. If I hold down button two, it goes to two volts. If I release, it goes back to zero. So that shows properly my button box is working. The next step for controlling modes with the button box is to assign your button box to your Hydros mode control input. To do this, go to your top left three bar menu, go to options, and then find that the section says mode control input. This allows you to select which channel is gonna control your modes. 
for this button box, input one is the channel that has the voltage for the push buttons, as shown in the previous section where we did the diagnostic. So go ahead and select channel one, upload changes. And now your modes are going to be controlled by the, the your buttons. But now you have to actually tell Hydros what voltage triggers what modes. To do this, now go into your modes. We're going to start with safe feed mode. And this input voltage here is what triggers it. So right now it's set to negative one, meaning nothing will trigger it. If we want, say, button one to trigger this mode, you want to make this one volt. Second thing you want to do is the exit delay. Exit delay is the delay or how long this mode will run when a button triggers it. For this, let's do five minutes. Now this is different than mode timeout. Mode timeout is used when you trigger the mode through your phone. Exit delay is what happens, or the timer that's used when you trigger it through the button box. So these can be different if you want. Upload changes. Now, if we go back to our main status screen, we'll see we're in normal mode. I'm going to go ahead and push the button for one, hold it down, let go, and you see the voltage triggered the one volt, and the feeding mode was triggered with a five minute timeout. You have one mode assigned to your button box. You can do it in multiple modes. Again, go into your mode menu on the top left, let's assign water change to a button. This time we're going to do two volts or button number two, and then give an exit delay of 10 minutes. And you can do the same process for all the buttons, the push buttons on your button box, assigning a voltage per mode for each button that's on your box. We'll go back to the main menu now, the status menu. And if we hold down button two and let go, it should go the water change. I will show you an advanced feature where you can take one of your push buttons and turn it into a virtual toggle switch. This is handy if you want to take and make one of your buttons turn off a certain output like a skimmer so you can clean the skimmer cup. First step is to make a new input for this toggle switch. Again, go into your input section. We're going to call this toggle three because we're going to use button three to create a toggle input. It's a zero to 10 volt input. Select button for the type. We're going to use input one because that's where all our push buttons are assigned to. And then trigger voltage, we're going to make them both three volts since we're using button three. If it was button one, you'd use both one volt. Okay, close that. Event duration. So this is how long your toggle is going to be enabled for. You cannot use zero because it will just immediately revert. The longest you can do is roughly 24 hours. So we're going to do that. You can't do indefinite, but we're going to do roughly 24 hours. And then on second press, we want this to end event. Basically, one press will turn it on, a second press will then turn it off. If you use restart event, it would just reset that event duration timer and it would never turn off until 24 hours went by. So again, you want to do end event for that. Go ahead and upload. Now, if you go back to your main status screen, you can see toggle three is now generated and a voltage of zero. So if we go ahead and press button three, it toggles on. I release the button, it's back to zero, but the toggle input is still held it on. It will be held it on for up to 24 hours and it will automatically revert off after 24 hours because that's what we set it. But if we press that button again, it will then turn off that toggle button. Now that we've made that toggle input shown here on the screen, how do you control an output with that? Well, it's a little bit trickier, but more advanced, but not terribly hard. So go into your skimmer, and you'll notice this section here called Depends On. This allows you to control this output depending on another output status. So what you can do here, we'll have to make an intermediate output so we can link this input to the skimmer. 
So go to your output section, add a new output. We're going to call it toggle three. And it's going to be the type generic. The input is going to be the toggle switch we made in the input section. And it's going to be only one input count. It's only a single input active when on. So this output will be on when the toggle step input is on and everything else you can leave at default and don't sign an output device. Go ahead and upload those changes. Go back to your main status screen. So now that you see we have this toggle output and we actually want to leave it set to auto. And you see the toggle three input is off. So is this output down here. If I go ahead and I turn on that input, you'll see toggle three on the bottom went on. And it will follow the same state as the input if I turn it back off. So now that we have this virtual output, which isn't assigned to any actual output, we can use it to control the skimmer. So now go into your skimmer, go to your depends on section, click on that toggle three we just generated and change the dependency. Now we want this to turn off the skimmer if our toggle button is on. So we want to select off if on. Go ahead and upload those changes. Go back to your main status screen. So right now you see the skimmer still on because the toggle button is off. If I go ahead and push button three again, it will turn on that toggle switch it turns on the output that's linked to it and then turns off our skimmer. So this will stay off for 24 hours uh, until the timer expires, or I'm going to go ahead and press the button again, toggle back to off. And then the output will toggle off and the skimmer will turn back on. So that shows you how you can link a push button to a virtual switch or virtual toggle button and then to an actual output. And you can tie this toggle three to multiple outputs if you want. Uh, that's one way to do it. And there's more advanced ways to, to program uh, buttons and switches, but this is a good intro into how to use them. The button boxes that has one of the aviator toggle switches, this section shows you how to use that input. It's kind of like what we just set up with toggle three, but slightly different. So first again, we need to make a new input for this toggle switch. We'll call it toggle. It is type of zero to 10. Now this is an input mode of switch because it's a physical switch that goes on or off. Now input port is important. All the push buttons on this box are on input one, but the toggle switch itself is actually connected to input two and that's the only thing connected to input two is the toggle switch. Now voltage range, this switch when it's off is zero volts into the controller. When it's on, it applies five volts to the controller. So we want to set this range five to five. Data type, this is an on or off switch. And then on when, we want to set it to inside range, meaning when it's five volts within the range, it will turn the input to on. Go ahead and upload that and go back to your main status screen. So now we have our toggle input. So physically the switch is off right now. If I turn it on, the input in Hydros will turn on. Now this is an indefinite uh, input that will stay on as long as that physical switch is on. Unlike the toggle three, where it would expire after 24 hours because the timer was set for 24 hours. So if I turn this back off, it will turn off the input. Now how do you use this for say like the skimmer we did before? Well, it's very similar. We need to make another intermediate output for this toggle switch. So if I make this uh, virtual or false output called toggle, again, it's another generic with one input count. And now we're going to hit toggle as the input, active when on, leave everything else the same. No output device. Again, this is virtual. It doesn't control a physical output yet. And go ahead and upload changes. Now if we go back to our status screen, you now see this toggle input. Go ahead and make sure it's set to auto. So again, toggle input is off and the toggle output is off. If I turn on that switch, both the toggle input go on and toggle output goes on. Turn it back off and they both go off. Now we want to link it to our skimmer. 
So go ahead and go back in your skimmer and then do depends on, change this from your toggle three output, virtual output, to your toggle virtual output. Again, dependency mode, we want to turn off the skimmer if the switch is on. Go ahead and upload this. Go back to your main screen once it's fully uploaded. Okay. So again, skimmer is running, toggle switch is off. Say I want to clean the skimmer cup. I flip my switch up, toggle input goes on, toggle output, the virtual output goes on, and the skimmer goes off. And it will indefinitely stay off as long as that switch is physically in the on position. Now, if I turn it off, everything should turn back off and then skimmer should turn back on. And that's how you use a toggle input for controlling an output.